Today we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. My idea for this show was to invite guests and get the conversation started, to take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. And we encourage our listeners to look within themselves to take decisive action to make a positive difference. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers. And today we are uh, going to discuss our topic for the day is the title of a song. And the guest today is the singer and songwriter of that song. And the title of the show is Hug a Million Times, the Pandemic Recovery Anthem. And I want to share a little bit about our guest today. Uh, Chrysanthi Pappas. For a world desperately in need of shedding the isolation and darkness of the COVID-19 pandemic over the past year, renowned singer and songwriter Chrysanthi Pappas has composed an original song that seeks to bring us to that feeling and, and the healing through her beautiful pandemic recovery anthem entitled Hug a Million Times. Singer-songwriter Chrysanthi Pappas has been compared to Nora Jones and Diana Krall by Jazz Times Magazine, and to Karen Carpenter and Carol King by All Music Guide. Her jazz songwriting style has been compared to Randy Newman by Cadence Magazine, while her pop songwriting has been compared to Carol King by All Music Guide. As well as her vocal gentleness, she has the husky voice passion of Bonnie Raitt and the swinging playfulness of Ella Fitzgerald. Please help me welcome my guest today, Chrysanthi Pappas. Welcome, Chrysanthi. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm just attempting to get that, get the pronunciation of your name correct. So I, bear with me. <laughs> you're doing excellent. Most people really stumble over it. So no, you're doing great. Yeah, particularly from the Midwest, because it would be Chrysanthi all day long. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You'd be surprised what I get from that name. People just see it and they freeze. So um, <laughs> I, I always tell them, just think of a chrysanthemum. It's kind of like that without the mum. Without the mum, right? <laughs> That's awesome. So I, I, I want to start with uh, your um, music background and, and when the, the roots of, of, uh, of music began with you, because you, we can get into this as a, con as a conversation continues, but it's, it's, uh, you, you do lots of things and, and you have a virtual music uh, studio and, and, and store behind you. I see ukuleles, guitars, I see, <laughs> see Oh. Well, I'm actually in my music studio. Um, that's just a sign that I use at my, you know, large gigs. And uh, I do play ukulele and drums and piano. So I'm in the room where all of that happens. And this is my kind of my workstation. So awesome. You know. Awesome. So talk to me. When did you when did you first become interested in music? I'd like to hear that journey, as it were. Well, geez. As far back as I can remember, you know, kindergarten was the first time I remember singing in public and my teacher, my teacher saying, I hear all the voices, but I hear one voice above all the others. <laughs> and, and she called me Chrysanthi. I think it's Chrysanthi, she said. <laughs> Would you like to sing for all of us? And I thought I was in trouble since she was pointing me out. I said, uh, I guess so. So I did. And that was the very first, my first remembrance of singing in public and people enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, then, uh, from there I started singing in front of my house because there was traffic. I lived on a busy street and we lived five houses from the traffic light. So the cars would stack up waiting for the light to turn green. So I would sing for the, for the ongoing, for the, for the traffic that was waiting. <laughs> that way I could sing the same song. I had like a different audience every two minutes. Right, but, you right. know, people would like be afraid to look over at me. Who's the little girl on the lawn? You know, so it was pretty funny. Um, anyhow, then from there, uh, I started doing, um, I sang at recess. I had my own little group. I called myself Chris Cool. That started in fifth grade. I thought I was cool. And my, my short name for Chrysanthi is Chris. And um, 
my four best friends were my backup singers and I would write all the songs and we would sing for everybody at recess. And then um, I sang in my backyard. My dad, my dad built me this kind of little stage just out of a rock really. And he put like these um, kind of like these poles into the ground. So they look like microphones and I would sing in the backyard. Uh, in fact, I have a song I wrote called My Backyard, which is not for today, but just so you know, uh, it's called My Backyard and it's all about how I started singing. Then I started doing community theater. Uh, I really loved theater, musical theater. And um, then by the time I was in high school, one of the directors that I had worked with in community theater um, was putting together this thing at a local supper club they called it a supper club back then it was kind of like where you went and had dinner and then there was a musical act and so he asked me and this other boy to to do this show so that was my first professional you know job at the time I was working at McDonald's I, I think I was in um, my junior year of high school so I was 16 years old and I was working at McDonald's you know an after school job yeah, yeah. and then this job singing paid as much as my whole week at McDonald's. So I thought, wow, I can, I can make money singing. This is, this is amazing. <laughs> that's how I started realizing, I think I want to do this as my profession. So that's kind of my childhood journey. So, so talk to me about picking up the instruments along the way on that journey. When did, uh, but outside of singing, when did the interest uh, come about with regards to that? Um, so I start, so my sister played piano and she's four years older than me. And I wanted to take lessons so badly. My sister hated it. And my brother, I have a sister and a brother. My brother played the clarinet or something. N neither of them, you know, were really into music. My, my brother is now he's in, he plays the guitar, but anyways, um, I was begging my parents, please, can I take piano lessons? And my mother said, you know, no, we're really, we're wasting our money on your sister's lessons. So I started just teaching myself how to play just by ear and like full songs. You know, I was learning like uh, a song that my grandmother liked to hear called Somewhere My Love. Da, 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 da. And then I learned the Charlie Brown theme. And my mother was like, who taught you that? And I, I said, I just figured it out. And that's when she realized, wow, I guess I guess she really is into this. So she let me take lessons. And that was in the third grade. And um I, it was classical lessons at the time. So I just played classical piano. I was very, very classical. You know, I did concerts and all this stuff, but I really didn't enjoy. I, I was much more into, you know, something that had a groove to it. Right, right, right. <laughs> but um, so then, uh, so piano was really the only thing I played as a kid. And then I started playing drums. Um, I, I think maybe in my late teens or... I can't even remember. And I just picked that up also. I was just like, pick up the sticks and started laying down a groove. I just, you know, kind of when it's in you, it's in you. you, you can't help it. You know, when I see people that can draw, I think, wow, how, how do they do that? You know, it's just in you. So, and then ukulele and I played a little guitar and I played the electric bass for a while. I played the trumpet for a while. I, I played the harmonica. I, I guess I just pick stuff up and it, it comes to me pretty easily. You can't help that. It's just, it's just in you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the reason I was inquiring about the, you know, sort of the roots of that is because I'm a musician as well. And I started playing the trumpet originally. And uh, don't you find it hard on your lips? It's like, if you don't do that every day, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, it definitely is, is critical that you stay on top and keep your chops in order. But yeah, when I was playing the trumpet, I would, um, you, you're correct, because I, I think every weekend in uh, probably my freshman, sophomore year of high school, I would pick up a fingering chart and grab a trombone and take it home over the weekend. Cool. Uh, grab a French horn the next week and take it home for the weekend. And because uh, what what you're saying is is so much of music, just like, uh, you know, I guess English language or something is so much of it is transferable. I mean, once you understand a major scale, it's just where, how do I find it on this thing? And once you do, but you don't have to relearn that. You just, yeah. right. I mean, how do I make this thing do that? You know, right. 
Exactly. But the music is still the same. I mean, it's still, yeah, you know, still the same music. So, um, but I noticed when I was playing the trumpet, there was quite a bit of time that uh, I was, I was the soloist oftentimes, like in the jazz band and that sort of thing. And, and um, I always leaned over towards or tried to inch my way toward the bass player so I could hear. And, um, and that really paid off because I did pick up playing the bass. And then a few years later, I could no longer play the trumpet. And I was pretty sad about that because that was my first love. And I still am a trumpet player first. I just can't play anymore <laughs> uh, for medical reasons. And yeah, well, it's yeah. very physical. Yeah, People very don't realize that. Yeah, I mean, I, I literally blew out some stuff in my throat and it was like, you know, you're lucky you woke up. And yeah, say, absolutely. You know, so um, so I was able to uh, throw all of my music energy into playing the bass. And uh, so I'm still the bass. The only reason I learned it was just so I could slap, you know, <laughs> do the pop. I love that. <laughs> well, there's some amazing little videos of youngsters on YouTube that are just doing it. A lot of females are really tearing the bass up. I mean, young yeah. Females are, are, I want lessons. I want lessons with them because they are doing right. amazing. Well, like who's uh, Carol, what's her name? The famous bass player. Hey. Oh my God. She's, I mean, come on. There's oh, no yeah. one like her. Oh yeah. I mean, like he's es Esperanza Spalding and yeah. 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 They're so some, cool. Yeah. Carol Kay. I mean, she laid down some stuff that. I oh mean, my God. She <laughs> was the master. She really was. She really was. So, um, so, so talk to me now. Um, I want to, I want to venture into, cause I know we're going to come up on a break here shortly, but I want to just talk about what has happened in the last year when, when COVID and all that came about and how that affected you. Certainly we know how it affected, you know, uh, I mean, nationally and worldwide and all that. But I'm just curious, you know, what effect that had on you? Obviously, the the, the calendar was was wiped. Um, I mean, mine was obliterated, and it was like, okay, now what? Exactly. Uh, so, but anyway, I'd like to hear about. I'll start into that because I want to. When we come back from the break, I want to lean a little further into that because I think that all this is appropriate in the setup of this song uh, because there was certainly plenty going on in the last year. Or so. Talk to me yeah. about your experience. And so, right. So, you know, COVID hit and nobody realized really what was happening. And um, at the time, you know, I, I'm a pro professional uh, full-time musician. That's all I do. I don't have another job. So um, this was in March of, of 2020. And I had 14 more gigs in the month of March that hadn't happened yet. And I remember getting a phone call that they were canceling one of them and then the next one and then the next one and the next one. And then all 14 were canceled like within a day or two. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I have no work for the rest of the month, thinking it was only going to be two weeks, you know. And then within a couple of weeks, I had no work for the rest of the year. Everything was canceled. Theaters were calling and shutting down and you know, music festivals and everything. Well, you know, everything just was shutting down. And so I, I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? This is my income. And um, plus, you know, not only just money wise, like creatively, what do you do? You know, what do you do when you can't do your craft? So um, I started doing an online show every Friday night. I still am doing it. This week is week 70. But that's a whole other story. But anyways, um, that really was so amazing and, and really helped me so much. But the song c comes later, you know, after that. But sure. so anyway, so there's the short answer is everything shut down for me. And I had to figure out what I was going to do um, creatively, musically and um, in every way to right. live life again. Well, you know, and I'm I'm glad that you shared that because I I uh, very much uh, empathize with all of that. Uh, yeah, my world shut down in probably about four or five days. It was just another call after another call, and then I realized, yeah, in sort of a panic, uh, like, oh my gosh, I'm a caretaker for my mother for the last ten years, and uh, that became a serious concern. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
definitely and you know beyond my own uh my own self so anyway uh we are speaking with chrysanthi pappas a wonderful singer songwriter and she has a wonderful song called hug a million times and it is the the anthem for the pandemic uh, uh and it is it is an awesome song and we're going to take a break right now we'll come back in just a moment Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires, and I'm here with my special guest today, Chrysanthi Pappas. And we were just discussing the impact, uh, the initial impact of COVID-19 on uh, professional musicians, uh, and, and, uh, of which she is. And, uh, so you were saying, I mean, so COVID came and it wiped out the employment calendar. Um, and you know, there were, there were other things also that were going on in this last year. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I actually cite them in the midst of the intro for the show, because I must say, as as we were left with this huge void and uh, what do I do now, I was forced to do some soul searching and serious soul searching, like what in the world do I do now? Because I too am a professional. So it was like, um, I'm out of everything I do involves gatherings of groups of people, everything. And I just I thought, know. Oh, wow. Um, so um, in that soul searching, I realized that I had a to-do list that had been running for about 10 years since the time that I became caretaker of my mom. And as I looked at that list, uh, podcast was probably at the top of it. I was about to jump into that at the time that I became the caretaker of my mom, at which point everything was set aside and all things were put on hold as I reinvented my life with becoming a caretaker. And, um, and I realized I have time now to explore this and figure out what I need to do. I was uncertain about the topic or where I was going with that. And so as I pondered that and researched podcasts and the like, I, um, that was when George Floyd hit. And that took it to a whole other level. And I sat there and I 
I, I soaked in uh, what was happening, all the narratives and all the feelings and all the, you know, just sort of sitting back, silent, just absorbing all of this as I'm thinking, what in the world also should I do with regards to a podcast? And then it really occurred to me, became hugely obvious that I needed to do a show and it needed to talk about the political unrest and the crazy going on. And it also needed to talk about racism in America. I'm biracial. So that topic has ne hasn't left my family much less. So it's something I've been super sensitive to um, uh, my whole life because, you know, you got black and white and I'm sitting there kind of going, I'm not in, I'm not really categorically in either one of these spaces or I'm in all of these spaces. And um, so that, that became clear to me that that was going to be what needed to be talked about because I realized in the narratives that were going on and all the voices speaking out, um, there were many, many things that they were not speaking about. And that's what let me know that that was probably work that was left for me to do. <laughs> you that's know, right, yeah. Feel in, in the middle of that, that dialogue and challenge some things and try to get an understanding. Uh, so anyway, that was, that that's how this show came to be. That's what, awesome. Of, of all of that. And um, so I didn't, I didn't mean to sort of, you know. No, it's amazing the things that come out of, you know what I mean? They, that would never have happened had it not been for the pandemic. It's like unreal. Yeah, yeah. So and I was asked about that in an, an interview, uh, a, a, a theater critic. Uh, I also have a considerable theater background as well. So all of that's. Re that's cool. I My degree's in musical theater, so. Yeah. Where, no, where did you go? Where did you go to school? Well, I went to a lot of places, but I my musical theater <laughs> degree is in from Dean College, which is in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, but before that, I studied music at um, a number of different places. But anyway, that's a whole long. No, no, no. Story, that's cool. but... the only reason I asked is because I went to University of Cincinnati Conservatory, and it was a musical theater and opera. And I, I didn't, I didn't stay really, really long because I realized I was actually employed for two or three years before I ever went to school. And then I realized I, what I'm, I probably need to get a degree in something else because this doesn't make sense because I'm turning down work while I'm at school. And I'm like, I think I'll go back to work. Yeah. That's pretty much out where I was. At. I didn't meet you. I didn't go to school right away. I dropped out of school when I was 18 and went on the road with a band and, you know, so yeah, I didn't go back to school till later as well. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 talk to me about again uh, your your views and and how this not only the pandemic. Well, the pandemic had an effect uh, because I don't know about you, but I lost a number of people, particularly in New York, that got hit hard early. Um, many of the the creatives. I mean, uh, you know, Terrence McNally, famous playwright. I mean, uh, these. Right. A lot of colleagues, a lot of folks that I work with that were taken out very early. And it started to remind me of the AIDS epidemic again, because I was going, uh oh, I mean, because people were just clocking out pretty quick. And I thought, oh, oh this is bad. Um, right, right. Well, first of all, the George Floyd thing, God, was that just horrible and eye opening that once again, come on, what the heck? You know, we have to do something about this. It's not going away. And I live in a town with a town common and I, you know, I went down to the local town common with a bunch of other people. We all held up, you know, signs, I can't breathe. And, and, and just, we didn't know what to do. You just felt like you had to do something, you know, just a, a kind of a, a quiet demonstration to just show that this needs to change. And um, I also am part of a, a church that uh, uh, that's very involved in anti-racism so that's great. And I mean, it at least helps you feel like you're doing something, even though the problem is so huge. But, you know, if it starts on a small level and everybody puts their, you know, part into it, then we can we can make a change. But everybody has to be on board. So, yeah, so disheartening, so disheartening. Yeah. And then the, the pandemic and all of the deaths and, and illnesses from that and people not thinking there's really a pandemic. And oh, my God gosh what a year it's been mm -hmm. unbelievable so yeah i share your i share your pain in that yeah it it is it is it is uh it was quite a quite a time and unfortunately it just seems to be protracted i mean you know when i when i listen to your song 
<laughs> when I got it, what, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks, two, three weeks ago. And I listened to it and I thought, wow, this is, this is awesome. And the whole energy of it felt like the cloud was lifting. I, I think it's a song of hope now because I don't think we're there yet. In fact, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, totally, back, you know, or it didn't go away or something. And so, you know, there are cities that are considering, you know, shut down again sort of thing. And I'm like, man, so I I, know. I'm very tentative about every date on the calendar, even still, it's like, will this, won't this? what's the deal you know I mean I don't trust it you know I don't trust it yet so yeah completely so when I wrote the song um it was so now fast forward um so the pandemic started in March so now fast forward to February so it's been just about almost a year and um a place that I used to perform at before the pandemic um anyways that's too long of a story, but anyway, they offered me the vaccination, even though I wasn't of the right age group yet and everything, they, they had extras and they said, would you like the vaccine? I was like, ah, yes, please. So I was able to get it in February, whereas most of the people in my age group and my friends and family weren't able to get it till I think April. Anyway, so I got it in February and the second one at the end of February. And so that's right when I wrote the song, it was, I thought, wow, I'm actually going to be able to be with people again. So, so let me rewind again. So as you know, we all couldn't be together since March of 2020. So for a year, you know, we lived in the house through a screen and everything was a zoom meeting. And, uh, my, my online show, you had, you had your podcast and I do my online Friday night. Um, I call it a virtual piano bar. Cause I let other people, you know, make requests and we kind of have a fun time, yeah. but anyways, um, so I lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, how the song. So the song came to be, so during all that time, you weren't able to hug anyone or be with anyone even. <laughs> Never mind, hug them. You couldn't even be in the same room with them. Right, right. So my niece was born during that time. And um, so her mom would call us every day and put her on the screen. So we she would get to know our faces. And at least when we did meet her, she'd be able to know who we were when we, when we saw her. So that was really good. So she was kind of one inspiration for the song. And so I get this vaccination and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to be together again, you know, be with people again. And so that's the initial way that the, the, the hope came to me, like, oh my goodness. And, and as I was anticipating it, so we weren't even together yet when I wrote it, because the chorus says, it feels so good to be together. And we weren't even together yet, but it was just the anticipation of that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that's really how the song came to be. And just giving everybody that light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, as a songwriter, I always feel like a sense of responsibility to, to find the hope in situations so that you're not just writing depressing songs, you know, tell people you know, where the hope is. And so it's when you write a happy song, that's one thing. But even when I write a, a sad song or a serious song, I try to always find the underlying hope in it. And um, so anyway, so that's, that's kind of how that came to be. Wow. Yeah, I agree with you on the hope thing. Um, I, 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 I just don't feel comfortable participating even in, you know, or, I mean, there are movies, there are there are shows, there are things that come about that I don't feel comfortable in because they don't offer any hope at the end. Right. And I don't understand oh, how people why. find it. Yeah. I can't, I can't do it. I mean, you know, I'm sorry. Where is the joy in that? People go to a movie that's like, leaves you feeling so horrible. There's enough of that in life. You know, you don't need to have entertainment make you feel bad. Yeah, music, music and the enter to the arts should, should help you and make you feel better. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, because it's such a powerful and particularly music is such a powerful medium for healing. And so yeah, it, it's really uh, a bummer when somebody misses the boat on that. And I, I you know, again, I stand with you. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> you on that. All right. So we are up on our second break now. And um, we are here today discussing hug a million times. Uh, with the singer-songwriter Chrysanthi Pappas. We'll be back in just a moment. 
Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back and we are discussing Hug a Million Times by singer-songwriter Chrysanthi Pappas, who is my guest today. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. And, and I'm so glad that you wrote this song because it's just so refreshing. And, and it, it, it's definitely sort of a throwback feel to me. I mean, it really is. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think. I think the sort of the bounce of, of like cheers. And, and I mean, there, there's a lot of... Oh. Yeah, it's been compared to a few different. I got the Randy Newman comparison, yeah, um, the other day, and then I, I wrote it. You know, the, remember the song "Love Song" by Sarah Bareilles? I'm not gonna write you a love song. And that was a few years ago, anyway. And then there's a Michael Bublé song that has that same. Anyway, those kind of were the types of songs that I modeled that that groove after. And as you know, as you read in my bio, I'm. I'm a jazz singer, but I also am a pop singer. So I kind of have this dual life going on um, where I do both styles of music. Uh -huh. And so when I try to write a pop song, there's always like my elements of jazz that kind of sneak in. I can't help it. You know, a two, five, one just gets thrown in there. <laughs> Right. You know, certain certain chord progression. I, I can't help it. It's just in you. Um, but it's, so it's hard for me to kind of separate that so the the song probably has elements of that as well um yeah yeah, yeah that's awesome that's awesome so thanks yeah, yeah the two the old two five one yeah the old two five one <laughs> i think the intro is a one six four five yeah you'll hear when you hear the intro of the song um yeah. which is just a typical you know chord progression in both pop and jazz Right. But, um, the, and the words came came to be um, when I was just thinking about how I was feeling tired of being alone. You know, you're there on the phone. The whole thing is just like, here we are on a screen. When are we going to be together? And um, the hug a million times thing, believe it or not, wasn't in the original. The original part was just um, it said, you know, until. It was like, until what? I couldn't figure out until. Like, I can't wait to see you. You know, I can't wait for the day until what? And I was just stuck on that. And then I thought, well, until we get to hug a million times, 
but that wasn't going to be the real words. That was just like my filler words. So until we get to hug a million times. And then as I started writing the rest of it, I thought, well, really, that is the sentiment that I want to say. I mean, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. So why don't I just commit to it? So I'm going to commit to that. And then I started writing the rest of the lyrics, um, you know, and throwing that refrain in again, like, let's hug a million times, you know, coming in after each of the, the mm. uh, chorus lines. So, you know, as a songwriter, like make sure your song title is evident. So when somebody's listening to the song, they don't go, well, I wonder what the name of that song is. They should be able to tell. Um, yeah. So then I kind of reinforced the, the theme and I was like, that's it. I'm going for it. I'm committing to hug a million times. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. I was going to, I was, I started to tell you earlier and I realized I abandoned thought, but now I'm coming back. Okay. So well, <laughs> I was interviewed by a theater uh, critic, uh, a review person um, here in Indianapolis. And he was interviewing different artists uh, during the pandemic, and he had us, uh, the the end of the interview was about the same four questions that were along the lines of how has this, uh, you know, the pandemic affected you personally? How has the pandemic affected you professionally? Uh, you know, and so on. So, so a series of questions. And when he asked me about that, uh, the last question was, what do you miss the most? And I said, I miss the hugs. I miss the hugs um, because I'm, I'm very much a physical person. Yeah, I'm a hug. Uh, I mean, me handshakes are fine, but I'm bring it here, you know, give, give it to me, you know? Um, so I, I really uh, appreciated again, when I heard this song talking about, uh, you know, hug a million times that really spoke to my heart straight away. Oh, so thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And so yeah. with, further ado i don't want time to to escape uh us being able to listen to the song so ladies and gentlemen here is hug a million times by chrysanthi pappas Together, 
Thank you. As you can hear, I got some of that jazz in there with the scatting at the end. I had to do something jazzy. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. But I love the little descending, the little descending line, the little chromatic descending. Oh yeah, but da -da 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 -da. oh yeah, right, right, right. There's a, that's a jazz rub right there. I was like, yeah. oh. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> love it. Takes a, a jazz musician to hear that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I was immediately like, oh, yeah, I love it. When we were on the break listening to the music, is any of that you playing? Yeah, well, yes, I'm playing the bass on all of those. Oh, cool. I love it. I loved all of them. Different music, different uh, occasions. And I said, well, you know, it's my show, so I can play. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I loved all of them. Yeah, yeah. really cool. Right. It's like, I, it's, I say it's okay. Nice, nice. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. So, yeah. so before we go any further, I do want to give you an opportunity to let my audience know uh, where and how they can support the song, uh, if they can, where they can purchase it, where they can experience it. So Sure. Um, well, I actually set up the domain name hugamilliontimes.com, so it would be easy to remember. Um, and that just kind of takes you exactly to my website, which is chrysanthi.com, but chrysanthi.com is a lot harder to spell and remember. So if you go to hugamilliontimes.com, that takes you to my website. You can download the song directly from my website on the music page, or you can, uh, there's a link also to see the video on YouTube. Um, and if you go to iTunes or anywhere where music is downloaded, you can download it from iTunes or, you know wherever else and you can listen to it on spotify and apple music and everywhere that you can listen to music so uh, but if you just go to hugamilliontimes.com that can tell you everything else you might want to know but thank you i appreciate that very much no i mean i want everybody to be able to experience that song and be able to play it and, and whistle along uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah thank you no it's it's a it's a spirit lifter and we need that we need that more than ever yes a feel good song we need to feel good yes absolutely absolutely so um so now what type of uh you know the different feedbacks that you've gotten on the song i'm just kind of curious and how other people are responding to to it i love the video by the way i'm just going to say that i love the video um, oh thanks is that, is that your niece is that yep. Yep, that's me holding her. Yeah, when I when I, that was when I finally saw her for the first time, and she's oh. looking at me like, you know, <laughs> she recognized me, wasn't quite sure, but yes, she's in the video at the towards the end. You'll see me hugging her. Yeah. Um, I know it was unbelievable. It was some, what a feeling to finally get to hold her after just seeing her little face on the screen. Yeah. So uh, anyhow, yeah. Well, when when people first could be together again, you know, when people were first being vaccinated, like in um, April and May and June, I guess it depends on what state people live in. But um, everyone was writing to me like, going, oh, my gosh, this song says exactly what I feel. And thank you for writing it. It describes my sentiment. And it's, I just love it. I just love it. So I've gotten tons of positive feedback and um I uh, was invited to perform the pre-show at Xfinity Center uh, for Hall and & Oates and um, some other bands as a result of um, people hearing it. And uh, so, yeah, 
people have been loving it. Um, I wish I could get it like uh, on a commercial or something so that more people could hear it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or the theme for a TV show or, or something. Absolutely. Um, and I have had music on television shows, like quite a few shows. Um, so maybe, maybe that'll come to be at some point. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Well, congratulations all day long. I oh, love. Oh, thanks. Thank you very much. It sings. It sings my soul. That's for sure. So. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, we are going to take our last little break, and then we'll come back here in just a minute. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires with my guest today, Chrysanthi Pappas, and her wonderful song "Hug a Million Times." We'll be back in just a moment. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. Here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back, and I'm here with my special guest, Chrysanthi Pappas. Hug a million times. So good to be here. Yeah, yeah. Thank I, you for having me. You are so very welcome. Thank you for, for offering the world that wonderful gift. That's a gift. That's oh, awesome. Thanks. Thank you. So as you were talking about my bass playing, you probably also detect just as we were talking about sort of styles and whatnot, you know, I'm, I'm heavily influenced by the bands of like the late 60s, 70s. Uh, you know, I love me some blood, sweat and tears and all kinds uh. of stuff and fire, all of the above. Oh, uh. Yes. Make my funk the P-funk. Oh, yes, yes. So <laughs> cool. <laughs> I was just like sitting there listening. It's like, yeah, that bass line sounds like a cop show theme or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Do <laughs> and Hutch, you know, here we yes. go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love a cool bass line. <laughs> yeah, I, I do too. I, and I try to trip across one every once in a while. <laughs> Boy, there's some, you know, coming up. I, I, baseline is not is not the easiest thing because you tend to want to stay out of the way of all the other instruments moving around, you know. Right, right. I never got good enough to play anything. The only thing I could play was, um, do you remember the song "Let's Groove" by Earth, Wind, and Fire? Bom, 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 bom. Because that's pretty much the whole song. Yeah, that is that, it. That, is that it. was it. That was the only thing I ever accomplished on the electric bass. <laughs> that's not bad, though. You can play that song all night. People will be on the yeah, That's true. Yeah. That's true. All you need one. And <laughs> that'll do it. So before we get out of here, I want to just give you uh, the last, uh, uh, well, a last word here. We're not, we're not quite done, but I just... I think in the midst of, again, the year that we've had and, and where we are, because we're not really free yet, I guess, uh, no. you know, just your thoughts about, just your thoughts in general about where we are and what your hope is moving forward. I hope that everyone will cooperate so that we can work together through this, really. You know, if everyone was on the same page, then we could 
get this pandemic under control with the new Delta variant and being vaccinated and not turning it into a political problem. It's just a health problem. You know, everybody just should stay healthy together. It, it, I don't understand why everybody, why some people are turning it into a political thing when it really isn't. Um, so I, I, my hope is that everyone will, to, you know, come together and so that we can all be together again. I mean, we are together right now, but as you said, you know, with new strains coming and things shutting down again, I don't want to go down that road again. I don't want another year of being in the garage from with people like from 20 feet away. So um, I hope that we can all come together and then we really can hug a million times for forever, you know, and put this pandemic as a thing in the past. Remember when we had the pandemic, not a thing of the present, you know? Right. So um, that's my hope and that we can continue to make music and artists can, can get back out there doing their craft. I can't wait for Broadway to reopen. I want that to be able to reopen safely. Yeah. I, I want everything to be able to go back to, you know, we didn't realize how, how lucky we were to just have everyday life and um until it's challenged you know. yeah until norm normal is challenged and now it's a new it's a different normal and we're like oh no yeah uh, you know I've, I've just been noticing over the last few days the numbers of artists uh whether it's stand-up comedians bands um a lot of folks are canceling gigs that are going into areas that are not requiring uh, vaccination and bands and again entertainers are are bowing out um, I, I heard one uh, one individual I cannot recall her name but yesterday I was listening to her and she said you know I just canceled a show in Houston and um, she, she's a co comedian and she said I just do not feel comfortable stepping in there into a community that doesn't care and I certainly don't want a gathering of my fans to potentially get sick uh, to come see me. So I will see them at a later time. And she just said, that's it, you know? But I saw some bands doing that too. There's a lot of folks that are bowing out uh, out of consideration for those communities that they're going into. And, right. you know, so um, I applaud them for those difficult choices because of course we wanna work, but the expense of it, I think is, is a little too great. You know, right. um, you have to look at the bigger picture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but anyway, I, I certainly hope that we will be on track and be able to make some music sometime in the future. And I hope that our paths cross. I hope I, I can know. face out and say, hey, let's let's jam. Let's do this. I was just gonna say, I gotta come hear you play. Yeah, yeah. So, so um I, I'm 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 in Indianapolis. So whenever you're in this area, certainly look me up. And if I'm yeah. in an area i will look you up but yeah, definitely that would be cool yeah that'd be a lot of fun that would be a lot of fun but yeah, yeah just just to be together and then we can say it feels so good to be together really hug a million times and we can actually hug in person exactly <laughs> i'm we sending you a virtual hug right now oh thank you <laughs> back at you yeah, absolutely. I so. love I love the song. And, you know, I was a little concerned about how how to play the song in, in the course of the show, because I'd love the video, wish that could be played during the show. But, you know, that I hope that everybody goes out and, and at least does their due diligence and hits either your website or goes to YouTube and checks out the video. Hug a million times. It's so wonderful. It's yeah, so thank you. And if you do go to YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know how that is like trying to get a certain amount of subscribers so please subscribe to my youtube channel and you can subscribe to my mailing list as well if you go to hug a million times.com that takes you to my website and right on there is my mailing list so that's great and i can let people know what else is going on so i very much appreciate that there you have it thank you so much for being here thank you thank you for spending your afternoon right here with us at bill myers inspire Remember, we're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Inspired Choices Network. Remember to take time this week to take a breath and look within yourself and figure out how you can make a positive difference in this world. Spread the word. 
and we'll see you here next Friday. Have a wonderful week.